Generally speaking, there are three major classes of ovarian tumors, and they're broken down into either germ cell tumors, sex cord stromal tumors, or what I call the other tumors. And the other tumors are historically lower yield, but I'll include them at the end and just fly through them. So let's start with germ cell tumors. So the first germ cell tumor that we're going to talk about is the yolk sac tumor. Now when you think about a yolk sac tumor, I want you to remember the mnemonic SAC. Yolk sac, S-A-C. And what that clues us in on is that the yolk sac tumor has Schiller-Duval bodies, increased levels of AFP, and is found in children. Now, here is a picture of a Schiller-Duval body, and a Schiller-Duval body is said to look like a glomerulus, but actually, I think the mnemonic works out really well here because it looks exactly like if you were looking top-down on a cracked yolk. Um, in my opinion, if you look in the pathologic image in the bottom right here, see where that black arrow is pointing? That is literally the top-down view of a yolk sitting in egg whites. And that is helpful when you think about the mnemonic because it's a yolk sac tumor. And again, sac, S-A-C, reminds us that we see Schiller-Duval bodies on the pathology. There's increased AFP, which is a high yield finding because if they give that to you in a question, you should immediately think of a yolk sac tumor. And again, that it's found in children, so um, young girls in their ovaries, and it also can be found in young boys in their testes. Uh, yolk sac tumors are also known as endodermal sinus tumors, and they can be found in both sexes, but they're, of course, included here in our ovarian lecture. So, quick summary, yolk sac tumors, I want you to think SAC, S-A-C, for Schiller-Duval bodies, AFP, and found in children. If you want to think about yolk, looking top down on a cracked open egg, you see that yolk sitting on top of the background of egg whites, and that is a Schiller-Duval body, which is said to look like a glomerulus. That is the yolk sac tumor, that's our first germ cell tumor. Moving on, we're going to talk about a dysgerminoma. So when we talk about dysgerminomas, I want you to think about dysgerminoma. So like Germany, right? Dysgerminoma. Because everything that you need to know has to do with the German flag. So there are three different colors in the German flag. And there are um, three-letter acronyms that you need to know associated with dysgerminoma. In a dysgerminoma, you have increased levels of LDH, and HCG. And I put them in the German flag here to remind you, this German OMA, the German flag has three different colors, and then there are th uh, three letter acronyms that we need to remember. Increased levels of LDH, and increased levels of HCG. That's literally the only finding about a dis German OMA that you should really remember for your test. If they give you increased levels of either of these things in the setting of a presentation that sounds like an ovarian tumor, it's going to be a dysgerminoma. So that's our second type of germ cell tumor. That is the dysgerminoma. Let's move on to the final type of germ cell tumor, which is the teratoma. Now, historically, the teratoma has been the easiest tumor for people to remember because it, it does have the most memorable appearance. Think teratoma. And the reason that you should think teratoma is because a teratoma has so many different types of tissues involved in it that it looks, it looks really terrorizing. And here, here's a gross image of a teratoma. It can have hair, it can have bone, it can have teeth, it can have high yield, know this, it can have active thyroid tissue. So teratoma, I want you to think teratoma. If you see anything that looks monstrous like this, it's a teratoma. So those are our three different types of germ cell tumors. Now we're gonna switch gears and talk about a, diff a completely different category of ovarian tumors. Now we're talking about sex cord stromal tumors. So the first type of sex cord stromal tumor is a fibroma. And there's a really, really high yield syndrome or triad, if you will, called MIGS or MIGS triad. And that triad is the fibroma, ascites, and a pleural effusion. And this is really, really high yield because sometimes on your exam, they'll maybe hint at like just ascites with no cause and then maybe there's one symptom that could make you think possibly ovarian tumor and you got to be able to put that together because when you think ascites your, your first thought is not going to be in the ovaries you know it's going to be elsewhere in the body so m knowing this triad is really high yield and i have a of just a great mnemonic to remember this when you think fibroma i want you to think of someone going bruh like a college bro who's who's just drinking beer non-stop not going to class like a, yeah bro like pass me a beer bro so fibroma because someone who drinks beer non-stop is going to have a beer belly and a beer belly seen on the left looks super familiar doesn't it it kind of looks like ascites which you see on the right so again 
it's really easy to remember fibroma because you're you're gonna say fibroma fibroma sub bro pass me another brew sub bro fibroma right you're gonna get the fibroma you're gonna get the ascites aka the beer belly that the college bro is drinking and anytime you have ascites we know if we know our physiology here that ascites can cause a pleural effusion so remembering Mike's triad with fibroma ascites and pleural effusion it's pretty easy to remember if you just remember fibroma so fibroma that's our second type of sex cord stromal tumor excuse me that's our first type of sex cord stromal tumor now we're going to talk about our second type that is the sertoli leydig tumor now the sertoli leydig tumor has two really really high yield findings the first one is that because of an increased secretion of androgens you get virilization the second finding is a pathologic finding that is that is pathognomonic for a sertoli leydig tumor and that is a rinky crystal now i've put the blue arrow showing you what the Ranky crystal looks like on the slide. Now, they're not gonna necessarily show you a slide. They, they might literally just say that Ranky crystals are seen on pathology, which of the following is the diagnosis, and you need to associate the Ranky crystal with the sertoli Leydig tumor. So when you think of a sertoli Leydig tumor, I want you to think of Leydig for crystals. So, uh, you know, if you're looking for crystals under the ground, you're gonna go digging for them. So Leydig for crystals, sertoli Leydig tumor. Really easy to remember, great mnemonic. Um, this went a really long way for me, both back when I was in my preclinical classes taking exams on this stuff and also on boards. This is a super high yield one. Lay dig for Ranky crystals. Don't forget it. That's our second type of sex cord stromal tumor, and that is the Sertoli Lay dig tumor. The last one, the last sex cord stromal tumor that we need to touch on is the granulosa theca cell tumor. There are two high yield findings with the granulosa theca cell tumor. The first one is hyperestrogenism, and that's secondary to an increased secretion of estrogen. And the second is call Exner bodies. And the beautiful mnemonic here is that you can't forget to call your granny Exner. So I want you to imagine that you have a grandmother and her name is Exner. You, you, I want you to remember the mnemonic call granny exner so granny for granulosa theca cell tumor and exner is the grandmother's name because call exner bodies so call for call exner bodies granny for granulosa and her name is exner again for call exner bodies so don't forget to call your granny exner this one's just super easy to remember say it a few times you'll never forget it that's the sex cord stromal tumors and at this point we've touched on every single super high yield tumor uh, as well as their super high yield associated findings and if you are comfortable up until this point you'll do really well on this section of boards but just to be a little bit more complete i'm gonna really quickly run through two more tumors that i put in the other category and they're the brenner tumor and the krukenberg tumor so the brenner tumor all i want you to remember is that brenner it's bladder like if they have anything if there's any association in the the histology or the pathology and it sounds like a bladder or they they say bladder they say ovarian whatever it's a Brenner tumor don't think about it don't try to understand it just memorize it the last one is the Krukenberg tumor and the way that I remember this I'm sorry if you're not a sports fan is that John Kruk for Krukenberg tumor he was a baseball player and he had a big belly and a Krukenberg tumor is a tumor that metastasizes from the gut to the ovary so I think of someone with a big gut like John Kruk um, and that's a Kruckenberg tumor. This is, that's it guys. That is all of the ovarian stuff you need to know. When you look at it in, in first aid or in pathoma, I know that it's overwhelming, but we just ran through that really quickly. So watch the video a few times, get the mnemonics down. These are free points. I hope you guys have a great day.